My name is uh, Tony Letieri. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, my name is Paul Petrao, and I'm, uh, I, used to, I used to live on 184 Hillside. And used to hit this high school here. It was a lot of fun. I have a lot of great memories here. Uh, a while back, a while back ago, when I left, uh, I decided to go to school for music, but I, I couldn't seem to write songs there because they would, they would like put me uh, in a room and say, "Bon, do this," and I was going, "I don't know, that's not how I write." So I decided to just go sit on park benches and meet people, and they would tell me their stories, and I would go on a piano, and that's how I would write a song. Uh, this next song is, is one such story. I met this gentleman in Ottawa, and he was a bum living on the streets. And uh, he comes up to me and goes, hey, buddy, you got a dollar for, for a coffee? And I said, nope, I'm a musician. I was going to ask you the same thing. So I, uh, I wrote this story, which is called An Angel With Him. Sometimes in life, uh, love is good, and sometimes love is bad. This was written while love was bad. Thank you. 
very well. <laughs> this is called, huh? Well, we'll have a few beer later, and we'll talk about it. It's personal.
night? Yeah. Wasn't that weird seeing all those strange people? Like, I used to hate you in high school. Why would you laugh at me all the time? And then there were all these nice girls, hi, Pono, kissing me. Why did you want to kiss me in high school? <laughs> no, Pono, I can't go up with you. You're like a brother to me. <laughs> I got two sisters. I don't want any more. <laughs> I'm kidding. Huh? <laughs> Is that my 38-year-old sister or my 41-year-old uh, sister? Uh, I know that there are some Italians in the uh, audience here. Oh. Hey, hey. It was tough, eh? It hurt, eh? It hurt, eh? <laughs> Did anybody bring their machetes tonight? We could have a good time. It hurt. It hurt. What do you want? Uh, I see that there are Italians in the uh, hall. I'd like to do an Italian song, which I wrote a few years back. It's called Parole di Papura, which means I had spaghetti today and I'm really full right now. <laughs> so it's a little hard to sing. My, my mother, eat, eat, pad, eat. <laughs> Look at them all, they can't move. They, they, they eat so much today. You ready, Hugo? <laughs>
Moreno on the fretless bass. Dans une band avec uh, des amis, Al, Bucky, Biff. Vous connaissez Bucky ici, moi? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Hey, Buck! Hey, Buck. <laughs> Where are you, Buck? Right here, buddy. Here's to This is what I always say. Bucky taught me something, and I to just, I, I like to just teach to you right now. Here's to you, from a chicken, if you get to it, you can't do shit, you make to it, you can't do it. No, wait a minute. Here's to you, from a chicken, if you can't do shit, you can't do it, you can't do it, if you can't do it, I'll 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 do Thank you for teaching that, Buck. That was a great lesson in life. <laughs> uh, when I was in a band with Buck, uh, we used to play often at uh, Cheers and around the North Shore area, you know, Los Angeles, Vegas, Chicago, Toronto. And uh, at one time, Bucky was playing his guitar, and he's playing something. I said, Buck, what is that? He goes, oh, that's one of mine. <laughs> Get out of here, that's one of yours. He goes, no, no, he goes, I wrote that. I go, you wrote that. So the band we had, we, we put it together, and, and it was a great song. And I said, Buck, one day I'm going to record that song. Yeah, yeah, fine. He goes, just hurry up, finish your beer, we'll go break some windows, and so tomorrow I can work. <laughs> just kidding, Marmy. Um, so um, a few years back, while I was living in Quebec, and still am, um, I did record this song. And it's called It's Not Fair. And believe it or not, this song went to number one in a, in a town in Northern Ontario, and we were like blown away. We we're looking on the charts, and there's Tracy Chapman and Alanis Morissette and all these artists. And then at the top, there's Pono Papera, because it's my name that goes, because I'm the singer. All right, Buck? You got a problem with that? You'll be getting all the money, but it's my name. Hey, Buck, I got the mic, okay? Don't be yelling at me now. You know when we lost? Okay. So anyway, this song went to number one, and uh, Buck, uh, for me and the gang here, we, we really appreciate you uh, letting us sing this song, because it's a great song, and every time we do shows, this song, we don't know why, but gets a great response, so it means that it's a great song. And I know you have a few more, so keep writing, Buck. All right? This is called It's Not Fair. She started crying. 
We all going to street dance after? Yeah. yeah. I haven't had a beer for two weeks because I can't, because when I sing, I can't drink. But we don't have a show tomorrow. <laughs> uh, a little while ago, I was talking about cable. Cable's been a big, I don't know why, but I mean, if I don't live an experience, I can't write a song, but the second best choice for me seems to be TV. I turn the TV on and I see all kinds of songs. So one afternoon, I was watching Oprah Winfrey. What's so funny? You don't like Oprah? You got a problem with that? I'm kidding. Well, it's because, you know, I can't watch Jerry Springer because it's, I mean, it's just a whole fighting. What do you want me to write? I gave you left, you gave me right? I don't know. So um, there was this, this lady on Oprah Winfrey, and she was talking about the poverty situation in the States, and I just started watching this episode, and it was just weird what she was saying, she, that she was so much into religion, that it was okay to be poor, that one day, that God would, would, would take control and uh, one of her sons uh, was shot on the street but she forgave the, the people because she said on TV, well, you know, I didn't have uh, very much food in the fridge. So I'm just looking saying, oh my God, this is weird. So she kept saying this, this phrase to Oprah, Oprah, I'm just waiting for my good things. I'm just waiting for my good things. And that title kept sticking in my head. So after the, the program, I just sat down on the piano and uh, this is what came up. It's called Good Things. Ready? Two, three, four. Sunday morning. 
university, and I tried to study anthropology. But I had to make a choice between two things. There was a piano downstairs in a little church where I was at Huntington Residence in Laurentian. And it was either that, writing, sitting at a piano, or, or going to my anthropology class at 8 o'clock in the morning for three hours. So the choice, to me, sad to say, I made the wrong choice. It was pretty simple. I sat down at a piano. So, uh, and while I was there, uh, this song came out. It deals with, um, I think it's the first time I had a girlfriend was when I went to Laurentian University. So I didn't know that you can change like every couple of weeks. <laughs> I don't know, nobody told me! Because I couldn't get a date in high school. That's not funny. So uh, this is called Shall I Leave? I'd like to thank her for leaving me because she's going to make me really rich one day. Hit me, Lou.
next song is a song about uh, judging people. We all get judged uh, from time to time, and it's just kind of hard to, to see these people again. But uh, it's a positive song. It's about uh, everybody makes mistakes in life, and everybody deserves to be forgiven, and everybody should forgive. This is called Never Coming Home.
That's okay, you can clap. Oh, so you got, you got, you got, you got, you got, oh, oh, oh. Elliot Link, you got a oh, oh, oh. Thank you. 
didn't make it again. Uh, all my life I've been told, but this, this thing about music there, it's just, it's doable, but, but it's just not doable. I mean, it happens to people in New York and in Toronto and in Espanola, not Natalie at Lake. So uh, this is a song about, uh, I mean, I've always been told, but if you believe in yourself, never give up. Never give up. I can never give up. I just can't. I mean, if, if I stop doing this, I, I, I fall down. Uh, so this is called Give It Up. And I know everybody has a dream. So if these people have dreams, don't give up. Whatever your dream is, you can do anything you want. All right? This is called Give It Up.
streams, Elliot Lake. Take a good example. Look what Elliot Lake's done since the mines have closed. What about George? I'm rooting for you. <laughs> Can I say that? I call him George. I've known him for, for 10 minutes. <laughs> we, used to, we used to live on Hutchison many, many years ago. That's where we used to have our mafia meetings. Hey, it's at the door. Man, you remember? Uh, a while back, I thought I was the only one who had secrets, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It looks like we all have them. It's a word that exists, so, or the hey. So one day I was thinking to myself, you know, what if we were just to send up all our secrets to the big guy? What would he say? So I, I sat down at the piano, and this is what came out. I tried to think for a title, Secrets. sometime this fall. You people look for it, okay? It's called Pano.
P-O-N-T-O. There ain't no Papero in there. This is just called Pono. We're thinking of calling it Pono and Bucky. What do you think, Buck? You still ain't making any money off of that, though. I'm just using the name like I'm using the song. Is that okay? No. <laughs> Security? Now somebody get out of here. Hey, Smo. You're not supposed to laugh, man. It's their show, right? I'm kidding. Um, there are two songs that I wish I never had, I never had to have written. Is, is that proper English? Is John Young here? <laughs> I hear the guy hits home runs. Yeah, right. Um, uh, this next song is is one song which I wish I never, I never heard of, or I would have never. I mean. Uh, a few years back, there was a little girl, her life was taken, and at the time I had a, a three-year-old son. I think everybody knows the, the story here, so I don't want to get into it. But um, I just saw this on the news, and I was, people were being interviewed who I went to school with, and people worked at Canadian Tires, and then I'm going, I know her, I know her. So I just, uh, I don't know, this song was also like given to me. I don't know if they're trying to tell me something, you know, or if they want me to tell friends something. I don't know, I just sat down at the piano and this came out. It's called To Be Healed.
This next song is a song that uh, while we were recording this album in Montreal last year, Louis comes up to me one night, we're in an apartment and it's really hot in there and I just don't feel like doing nothing except eating black olives. And Louis says, Punt, I think I have a song. I said, oh, Lou, please, I got 16 million melodies going through my head. I said, he goes, Punt, just listen, I have something. So he started playing this little riff uh, on the guitar. And I went, oh, Lou, that's good. So we had to just work at it, and like it took 15 minutes. This song just poured out, and you know it's a good one, but it just pours out. It, it, if it has to be worked out, worked out, it's not, you know, shoot it out. But, but when it just happens, we looked at each other and went, oh, we got to put that on, on the albums. So that song wasn't even supposed to be on the album, and now it ends up being the, the very last song on the album. And um, we were just talking about our, our families and how we miss everybody, and I had my two kids up north, and. I hadn't seen him for 17 days, and we hadn't seen his wife and his kids for the same amount of time. So we just sat down and wrote this together, and it goes something like this, it's called Home. I'd like to dedicate this to all you people, because this is my home. Johnson, did you ever fail me in high school? Are you sure? But I think you had the authority to fail me, didn't you? Okay. I'd like to see you after, please, in my office. <laughs> Any other teachers here who failed me in high school? Yo, he all did a really good thing. <laughs> That's not funny, Barry. 
Um, a couple of years ago, I was working in a pharmacy, and I, uh, while I'm working in a pharmacy, I'm, I always talk to God because I'd say, God, why did you stick me between toilet paper and Kotex? <laughs> why did you do this to me? He gave me this talent to write these songs, to go out and get them. Mr. Morrell failed me in math class in grade 9. I have to see him there on Friends Street Dance. Algebra. What am I supposed to do without a piano with? The square root of, of this chord. I, I, I don't know. So I was between toilet paper and cotex, and I was just kept talking to God. I said, God, 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 please, why are you doing this to me? I said, I mean, if you're trying to be funny, I'm the funny guy here. I said, what are you doing? And I, said, and, and, and I just kept hearing this voice, Don, just do it. Just do it. And of course, that voice was my Uncle Tony telling me to cut my hair. <laughs> just do it. You look like a bum. Cut your hair. <laughs> you like that stuff, though? Yeah. You have a big accent for an Italian man. <laughs> you, you've been here 40 years. Why do you still have that, that big accent? Huh? And too many sardines, huh? Who's laughing like that? So I said to God, I said, God, come on. And I just kept hearing this, do it, do it, do it. Because I kept saying to him, I said, look, I've been good lately. And then that, that title stuck in my head, good lately. So when I got home after buying my, well, you can guess it wasn't Kotex. After buying my toilet paper, I, I went home and I sat at the piano and, and this is what came out. It's called Good Lady.
Thank you very much. We know that uh, last year, after recording the CD, we we know that soon we have to get on the road full time, and we're a little worried about not losing things we have, but things are going to change for us a bit. But we don't want that to happen, and uh, it's it's sometimes scary. So I wrote this song about that. It's called In Me. Us as musicians, as artists, we don't really have a choice. It's just in us. We, you know, we can't help it. If we don't do this, we're just gonna rot and go work in pharmacies. You don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. So this is called In Me.
Mr. Anthony Carroll.
said thank you to my uh, my business manager, Mr. Dominic Dorsey, without you, we wouldn't be up here right now. Thanks a lot.